Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in network analysis and synthesis. In this network analysis problem, we'll understand mesh analysis for AC circuits. The fundamentals of mesh analysis will remain the same, but it's just that we need to deal with complex numbers here. So if this is something that interests you, then please keep watching. I'll illustrate the process of mesh analysis for AC circuits with a small example. This is a network with two sources, two voltage sources, and we have some impedance in this branch, which is 3 plus 5J, and some impedance in this branch, 3 minus 8J. This branch has purely resistive impedance, 2 ohm. We need to treat the impedance in these branches as 1, so that's the whole key point here otherwise everything is the same so what we do is th as the first step we assign mesh currents or the loop currents in both the loops so i1 current will flow in this branch and in this branch i1 minus i2 current will flow and in this branch i2 current will flow and of course this is the voltage source so all the drops here will be equivalent to this voltage and all the drops here will be equivalent to this voltage. So the fundamentals will remain the same. Uh, when we start going in loop, we see this voltage being generated, this voltage being dropped, 2 into I1, and this voltage being dropped, 3 plus 5J into i1 minus i2 now the next key point is to uh, separate terms for i1 and i2 so what we get is we we know that this i1 features minus 2 here and this i1 features minus 3 plus 5j here and i2 features minus 3 minus 5j so taking them on the other side we get 2 plus 3 plus 5j into i1 minus 3 plus 5j into i2 which is equivalent to the voltage in the loop so finally we need to develop an equation which has uh, some impedance with i1 and some impedance with i2 and impedance into current will be equivalent to voltage and on the right hand side also we have voltage so that that's our equation number one in the equation number two or in the loop number two we do the same thing and we segregate i2 i1 and we equate it to the voltage source here all right so the next steps are critical we need to express these equations in matrix form as this so the coefficient of i1 and i1 are featured here the coefficients of i2 are featured here then we multiply this with the matrix i1 i2 and we equate this with equivalent to the voltages so this step is super crucial we need to express the equation 1 and 2 which we have formed in the form of matrix so column number 1 will be the coefficients of the i1 matrix and column number 2 will be the coefficients of the i2 matrix and the coefficients are nothing but the impedances associated with i1 and i2 and then let us say if we were to find i2 then what do we do we take up uh, the impedance matrix in the denominator and in the numerator we replace the row uh, I'm sorry we replace the column 2 with that of the voltages so uh, that is what we are doing here we replace second column with the voltages and if we were to find I1 we would have replaced this column with the voltages and we would have kept the impedances here but let's say we have to find i2 so we, we do this 
now the next step is to convert all these complex numbers which are expressed in rectangular format right now into polar format for example we need to convert 5 plus 5j into its polar format that can be done using the formula under root of 5 square plus 5 square and that becomes our r and tan inverse 5 upon 5 so b upon a imaginary upon real so this will become our angle so solving this we get our angle theta which we put here and the other uh, other way of doing this is simply converting rectangular format to polar format uh, using a calculator 991 es for which i have made numerous videos please refer those videos if you wish to do do these calculations uh, quickly we need to go into the complex mode in the complex mode we can easily convert a plus b i format complex number into r angle theta now why is it important to convert these formats which are known as rectangular formats into polar formats because multiplication is facilitated in the po polar format very easily so we were to multiply 7 into 10 and the angles are added and similarly cross multiplication will give me this okay so in the next step what we do is we do the thing cross multiplication now we've gotten um, addition and addition is facilitated in the uh, rectangular format likewise multiplication is facilitated in the polar format addition is facilitated in the rectangular format so i'll convert this thing back into a plus bi format so that i can add and subtract them easily so that's what i do here in the next step and finally you get a rectangular format in the numerator and rectangular format in the denominator you can directly calculate this in the calculator otherwise you'll you'll need to convert it back to polar format and divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles uh, but nevertheless we've gotten the current to be equivalent to 2.98 angle 103.29 there is no need to express this current now in terms of a plus bi format so finally finally we get the loop to current and let us say if we were to calculate the drop in the capacitor that would have been i2 into j8 uh, if we look into our diagram again i2 is flowing into uh, this independent branch and it would have dropped some voltage here that would have been i2 into j8 and that is what we have done and again very cleverly this is uh, our current expressed in polar this is our impedance expressed in uh, rectangular format and you can directly multiply them on 991 es calculator time and again i mentioned this if you are well versed with the calculation of complex numbers the uh, the analysis of ac networks is no different from dc networks so that's the key point and finally we get the voltage drop here and i hope this quick tutorial on uh, mesh analysis of ac networks was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel as well i'll see you around in the next video to come till then take good care of your health Bye bye